We're gonna take the lifts again, of course. But here, it's just such a different experience because it's you have to be in a cool man-made thing. And it's all tailored to actually skiing in and whatnot. And it's so much more tame too, which feels a bit more safe. But it's more populated and feels like it's more for I don't know people to be in. And you get these really cool night lights at night too. Um, actually, where are we gonna go? I guess I'll go this way. But that was one of the things I loved about this, and the reason I actually do want to play potentially original whiskey, but definitely go vacation at some point. Not, not immediately after this, but at some point one day, because there's something so unique to this. I've talked about it throughout the course of this playthrough. But, also yeah, the reason you see the US Ski Team logo everywhere is because it's actually your sponsor of this game, it sounds like. But, that's also why everything here seems to take place in the US, despite being otherwise kind of ambiguous or seeming like, be like slightly Japanese. One, you have the random kimono and Japanese hair, but on top of that, you also see little things like, I think the ski instructors literally bow to you, for instance, things like that. So you see, you still see little traces of this game's origin being made by the Japanese Namco Bandai or Bandai Namco, whichever name they're using now because they've switched at some point. Just a funny little trace of that, but it's it's almost like a simulation game except it's not simulation in the sense of like doing some kind of like, I don't know, thing you normally think of simulating. It's not meant to be realistic either, so it's not like a flight simulator or she she fall asleep. Also, the camera forces you to look behind at the top here. Curious, are these people I recognize? If I look at the people here. Oh, it's Flash! Hey, Flash! Oh, well, we just met you today. I don't think. Three is what I is three what I want. Let's find out. I'm glad, sorry, I didn't return your your wave. But you can, for instance, actually go up the ski lifts, I and mean, the ski lifts are there to take for one, and as are the chop or the helicopters. I've some of those called choppers. But also, you can actually ride them in the sense that you can just watch yourself going up them and look around, and that's kind of cool. A weird little detail. And you have all these little details like you have the PA system here, and you have multiple times of day, and you have, she, she's really sleeping lately. I guess it's, it's past her bedtime, it's past mine. And Vlas is just talking to her as often, she's not hearing a word of it. You can scare with other people. There are apparently fireworks out here at night, which is also cool. You can see the town over there. You can't actually access, but behind the steering resort, there's a town there. I wish you could go into it and like do stuff and maybe like buy things there or something. That'd be really, really cool. But there's so many little details that for some reason it doesn't feel like they need to be here. Like what would I expect if I just played some random skiing game? I'd expect to just be able to ski and nothing else. But here, it yeah, it has life to it, which you wouldn't expect because it looks and even sometimes feels cheap. Like some random kind of throwaway-ish game, but I mean it's a sponsored game too. <laughs> Not matter if that is any indication, but instead, she, she woke up. She's not very happy. She woke up the start. But instead, oh, there's someone else. Meet up with them. You have, even if it's just a design limitation, because they can only design with so many characters. You have recurring characters you can go out and meet. You can have. You have the, the tour guide as well that you get to have multiple meetings with. You see little scenes like this just taking place. The people are arguing over here next to, next to the bench. You see little scenes of people talking together and doing things together. And they didn't need to put any of those things in the game. But I like them. Here we are again. So you a lot, Peter. Mostly Anastasia in particular, but 
Where's Snowman? Snowman is the one I spent the most time with. Snowman is the only character I actually remember in this game, too. When I wasn't playing it, in the interim of however many years between me playing this now and playing it previously. Because it's just fairly memorable. Oh, jeez. This is gonna be tricky. And I haven't heard that, that voice OP in a long time. I haven't heard the music here in a long time. But I love it. But yes, there is in fact something we're doing here. You can probably guess what it is actually from the fact that there's only one thing left to do. You also walk into some of those areas like... A little stand set to, um... What was it? That, that little... I don't know, patio type of area. I'd have to go start from up here. Anyone else to meet up with here? I feel like finishing with fireworks is also really fitting. Here. Look at the town off too. There's me from more town. Or was that the same town as before? I don't care. It's cool. <laughs> I know there's a strange sense of fun and almost awe and wonder I have with this game that I just haven't found anywhere else. Because I don't know, whatever this game accomplishes, people don't usually think of trying to accomplish. I guess just kind of like feel like you live in a certain little world. Which I guess is it's just immersion. I guess that's really the main word, word I can come up with to describe what I enjoy about this game. It's immersive to me in a weird way. What? I was trying. I don't know how I ended up. Like, look, there's a sign here. What's this place called? Kisra Sera. It's a little Sp Spanish place, and or Mexican or whatever, Spanish speaking place. Like, <laughs> restaurants with names. Cool. Danny's Dogs. That's a pretty big, cool looking, dramatic dog building. Well, it is what it is. That's not how you jump. It's my biggest difficulty in this game, just jumping at the right time sometimes. It's not your place to get a good start for what I'm trying to do here. Also, you have people that will tell you things about the slopes here on the resort. You have staff, basically, for the resort. And the tutorials, tutorials aren't just tutorials, they're ski school and whatnot. They're staffed by people. With uniforms. This is probably the. It's no wonder it took people so freaking long to find this. It's barely. It's nearly impossible to do. What did I do it before? I think I can do something weird to help myself out a little bit. It's gonna be kind of weird if I do this. I wasn't trying, I didn't press anything to turn around, but I guess, I guess Granny's got the idea of what I want to do here. I did not do anything helpful for me whatsoever, but okay. You can probably imagine what I'm trying to do here to some degree. Even if not everything in this game is the best, even if the controls can really freaking suck sometimes. Like, I cannot get myself to stay crouched, and I cannot jump when I need to. And I'm trying to approach something at a really specific angle, I can't get that to happen. For some reason now, I'm doing 180s when I'm not trying to. But, even so, there's something special to this game that I really, really like, and it's not just nostalgia. Maybe this game actually has something special to it. That's it. Amazingly, somehow, that's the next thing to jump over. Also, yeah, so about that last thumbs up with the... Right, you basically never ever have to do save landings here. But also with the... Uh, that last thumbs up that I thought was seeing the snowman a hundred times. Turns out that on that ten-year-old thread that seems to be this the only list in the world, at least in the English-speaking world, of all the different 
Maybe we're just sitting around having fun. Yeah. Lots of hidden secrets too, lots of little hidden tracks and whatnot. But also you can do <laughs> you can do little takeout missions. What's this place called? That turned out to be a lie, which I had forgotten about. Someone else will join with us, Jamboree. Looks like kind of, kind of like a mall. Yeah, there, there's the radio. The maps you can see are actual maps, although unfortunately they're not quite interactive or anything. Although I have a map anyway, so I guess there's not much point. What are these other places around here called? I don't know if any of the other games would have this kind of depth to it. If depth is really the right word for it. East Tower Hotel. Like, I want to just look at all these places and see what they're called now. Who are you? You're someone new, it looks like. Sharon, sure. Nice to meet you, Sharon. And that's what I love about this game. It's something different and weird and cool. But, I guess we could have one last run down here with our friends. One last run down the resort as well. With the night sky and the fireworks overhead. It feels kind of symbolic too of it being nighttime and the end of this rather long adventure and my very long long night here too. I've been recording for for about two hours. I can can't tell very specifically how long it's been because my email I got another email that's covering up the the time now that I've been recording. And little things too like people are implied like talk and react to things as as you're on the gondola together. I love it. It's like I I don't I guess the only thing I can come up with is immersive, but people have different ideas of what immersive means and how you make something immersive anyways, so I don't know how all that works. And then on top of that, whenever I compare it to like a simulator or something like that, that, that doesn't capture it either, because it's not that, the, that this game is realistic in any way. I think it's the from realities are the right ones, really. And there are things that I would try to add to this if I was to make something like this, where, for instance, you could actually go into the buildings of the base, perhaps even just go to the menu from there. You'll notice I tend to go to the main menu from the base of the mountain or slopes, whatever area I'm in. That's kind of why. The idea of just kind of packing up and going home. Or wherever it is that you're staying. Oh jeez, everyone's surprised. Everyone's got their mouths open. We got a nice mix of skiers and snowboarders here. I like that. It has some longevity to it. There's so much stuff to do because there's so much stuff to find in the game. Encourages you to encourages you to do stuff and find things and uh, understand the mechanics and all that. And it doesn't. It gives you less information than I think it should, particularly for, for things like the amazing runs, where the only word you have to work off of is amazing, <laughs> and nothing else. It doesn't tell you where you have to do them. It would make you think of that. You can do them anywhere, probably. Or what makes them amazing? Yeah, I had pretty amazing runs, I guess just weren't amazing enough because I wasn't doing enough turns on Dragon or something like that. No idea. It feels weird talking about the mountain now and being here again and how tame this place is. In comparison, it feels so small. It feels homey. And I've, I've learned these places inside and out too. And at least the mountain I can still kind of fear and respect in a certain way because you saw what it did to me on my last run down the mountain. But here it's another matter. Here, I have I conquered this place fairly well, I'd like to say. I know all of its secrets, I've I've done everything there is to do in it, as far as I'm aware. I guess I could learn a few more things like <laughs> where the different restaurants are or something like that, silly like that, but still. I don't know what the slopes are and whatnot. I love the element of how everything has different names, all the different areas have different names, and they still feel natural on the mountain too. And I've been working on a map, and I'll However much I get done on that map, I'll append it, or at least try to remember to append it to the end of this playthrough as well. Uh, probably put it in the video or something like that, or if not, a link to it in the description. If I forget any of those things, please, actually, don't just say you have permission to, but please tell me to put it in a comment or something if I don't actually make any mention of that map in, in this video. And by that I mean by showing it in the video or by linking to it in the description or something or anything like that. Because I do want to, I want to show it to people. I made it for a reason. It's also a vector too that I've been making, vector graphics, so it's scalable to infinite sizes. 
I've been careful about that. Make it as large as possible. You can also jump for a second. People are yelling at each other over there. commenting on the announcement or something. Yeah, see, just like announcements like that, there are things that you would hear <laughs> in a place like this. I love it. It does still take a while to get up here, though. I guess it is a lot slower taking this than it is taking a helicopter to the top of a mountain. Man, I can't... I still remember though that first time I went on the mountain in this playthrough. The first time I ever went on the mountain, I don't remember, but on this playthrough, man, the, all of a sudden the new sense of scale, just how huge everything is on the mountain, nothing nothing compares to that. Here, coming back to this, it feels so small and so tame, but the tameness is what's nice about it. It's populated by people. There are people to be with. It's not just me and the mountain. Being alone with the mountain is cool. And any people that you meet up with are like fellow daredevils, but here, you just have fun. And see some pretty lights, and get a hot dog, or some Spanish food if you want it. And probably some other kinds of food. I don't know. Let's have a chat. I feel like I kind of done to death everything. Uh, I've tried to formulate as to what is I like about this game and why I want to play others like it. And I guess if I get to go vacation and potentially the original Wii Ski, then I'll probably... Oh, look at that rainbow over there, too, over on Kangaroo. I never noticed that was a rainbow by the, the half-pipe section there. I think that's that, what that is. It might not be. It might be something else. I'm pretty sure that's Kangaroo. Yeah. It's probably supposed to be expensive just running him on continuously. Look at that shooting star! Whoa! Is there a different weather here on the resort too? Because there definitely is on the on the mountain. I think there is here on the resort too. I've I've seen days where it's snowing more heavily. Love this. But I guess I should also start talking to instead of talking about whatever other games like this one I'll play at a later date where I'll, I might further refine my ideas on what it's like to play these sorts of games, especially if I ever find anything else like it, which I may or may not ever. Anything that scratches that same much. I should also probably talk about like the actual gameplay in this and whatnot too. And the imperfections? I mean, there's only so much this game can do with it being motion controls, for one I guess. like. There's a certain degree to which some of the difficulties with motion controls are inherent. Like me talking about it being kind of a pain trying to make precise turns and whatnot. Or sometimes not managing to jump when I want to jump. Things like that. And not all of it is the game's fault, I realize. And they try to do things. They try to at least, for instance, make it fairly inconsequential, which tricky you do most of the time, for instance. If you are a spread eagle or adapter or whatever, it doesn't really matter. But if I want to do one thing and I'm doing another because the gyroscope just doesn't pick up what it's supposed to pick up, it's it can be fairly annoying. And there were cases where it got real bad, especially when I was trying to do the the trick challenge, the freestyle here on Kangaroo and in Jamboree. And other people in the ski lifts too, I love it. But, I don't know, but it's, so there's simultaneous frustration, and the biggest frustration right now for me is how little the game gives you to work with for some of the unlockables and whatnot. By unlockables, I basically just mean if you want to actually get the nice little thumbs-ups. Because the one thing is, the game tells you so little. It doesn't even tell you what the thumbs-ups are to begin with, which is, okay, cool, you have to discover what all the different things are. But, like, for instance... You might never get an amazing run, because you have no idea what an amazing run is for one, and the game doesn't even tell you what an amazing run is once you know you have to get amazing runs. But before that, you might just never ever get one. 
Or, like, okay, you find eccentrics and things like that, and you get the idea, okay, you're gonna find people like that. But, for instance, how are you gonna figure out you need to ski between certain things for some thumbs ups? Or, that you have to. It's a really good thing, by the way, that this music doesn't get content ID that's playing all the time. It may happen at some point, but it hasn't happened yet, at least. So, it probably won't happen in the future. Yeah, look at all those. those gondolas. Uh, and I, I get myself sidetracked and I forget what I'm talking about. The, the maze and runs are maze just the biggest example. But for instance, if you have to ski, ski between things, how are you going to know they have to do that to get a thumbs up? So a lot, of the, a lot of these things are things that you'll do on your own, like falling into a pit or getting caught in an avalanche, falling over. Like, that's that's one thing. But it's mostly the stuff that you have to work for that really frustrates me, as well as for instance, exploring all the areas on the mountain, I have no idea what counts for that. Even having gotten all the thumbs ups, I still don't know how you actually get some of the thumbs ups in this game. Which is not a good thing. Especially for the amazing runs. The perfect runs are more specific because it's from peak to base. Okay. I know what peak is, I know what base is. My observatory is open, I forgot about that. That's cool. Generally, this is. Big and cool looking. What's actually over here if I look inside from here? There's something going on in there. It's, it's not just the lifts and whatnot, it doesn't look like. I'm not sure what's going on in there. It's cool. You yeah, have little touches like this observatory is just here to be cool! And it's open at night. Henry Snow Resort. Elevation. Almost five kilometers. I want to see what I can make out to read on here. Because there's actually more than just the map. Come down there, Granny. So you see descriptions for the different areas, I think. So I, I can see... Gazelle, I think. I can see um, Serpent. I can see Hedgehog. So I can get the descriptions of the areas on the left. Oh, come on. Come down there. Everyone's crowding around the the map. No, don't do it. Uh, darn it. Stop that. <laughs> it can be a little frustrating if you have a bunch of people, but to be fair, that feels kind of reasonable. Peter, come on. Don't be a Peter. They have little signs telling you what's where as well. To the left of this sign. Attention, something. Those are more just more descriptions for areas. That's cool. I wish I could actually read that and see what the the descriptions are, but I can talk to these people anyways, I guess, to get the lowdown in these areas regardless. But, one last run down. Hopefully this game has credits for me to see, too. We'll have to see. I'm not, I, I feel like my weird about I might be getting messed up at this point or something, because I'm not... Most of the time, when I'm... <laughs> Pushing with my stocks, I, I'm not. I'm not telling the character to do that. Nice view off in here too. <laughs> Everyone just pushes into each other. <laughs> I I do think the snowboard controls a little bit differently, and I don't like how it controls. I think it's tricks or something different or something like that. You, I guess the one nice thing is you don't have to worry about thanks for the speed boost. About being goofy foot or not. Or basically being forwards or backwards because there's no consequence to it. Being goofy or regular. And you can also choose your stance, which is kind of nice. But, uh... I don't know. A little... <laughs> That little, there was a little like, implied exchange there. Like, the person on the left just falling over and the person on the right being concerned by it. Whatever is going on here. It's a nice little rest stop, too. Sorry. You got her angry at me. Look at that. It's a really repetitive popish song I've heard so many times in this game. You also have your MP3 player on, which I never play with, but it's also a cool idea. 
I like the references to all the other Namco games in it, which I mean, in a certain capacity is just kind of lazy that they just took songs they already made and stuck them in here. At the same time, it's cool, because they're songs I, I like. I can listen to Klonoa stuff if I want. But I prefer taking in the sights and sounds of the resort itself, or the silence of the mountain, instead. Plus, I don't know if the Windmill song is the most appropriate of songs for here anyways. Loose Tower, maybe? I don't know. Random Klonoa song. No, the song, a uh, Klonoa song that would be fitting for here would be Untamed. Wait, no, Untamed Heart is in this game, isn't it? Let me check. Yeah, Untamed Heart's in here, never mind. <laughs> I thought I can do that. I can just, I can just bring up my MP3 player and say, yep. That song is in this game. And... Let's go on daring for a second here. Oh, I didn't expect to land back on the rail there. Oh! How'd you get down here? Where'd you come from? How do you always get down here before me? So long before I did. I don't have the speed to make this jump now. I wasn't able to crouch. Hey, space man. Fellow space traveler. I too once donned a space suit. If you're not aware. I'm not trying to crouch right now. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how much this is my... His uh, controls hand problems and me... Hand problems with my <laughs> controllers. But it's just something inherent to the medium, which is a big part of why motion controls haven't really caught on. And why it was just the Wii's big gimmick and we didn't really see it again after that. So... But at the same time, it means that games like this are really unique and that you don't really find all games that control like this one. I mean, yeah, VR it has motion controls nowadays too, but it's, it's a really different animal, I feel like. Not that I've ever tried VR myself, nor do I know if I ever will. As much as I'd like to. And talking about the same idea, like, a game like this one would be awesome in VR, because you could, it's the matter of, I mean, you'd probably throw up, but that, that aside, like, I'm not trying to, for some reason, I keep accidentally getting a safe landing. But, because this is, a place that it feels like you're kind of actually inhabiting and that has life to it and there are people around you doing stuff and whatnot and there's history to it and things like that and that's all what I like about it and that would work really well if for instance being able to explore this area in first person yourself or how tough it would be to play as a first person oh I'm kind of curious now actually I'm gonna get experimental for a second here. I should probably make like a separate video doing this at some point if, I, if this actually turns out to work. But there's a little thing you can do in this game or in this emulator. Where is it? This. Okay. And. Whoa! Oh jeez. Maybe, maybe we should get down to the bottom first before we do this. Oh my. This is interesting. <laughs> it's not what I wanted to do, but okay. That's not the angle I was looking for. <laughs> yeah, I should definitely make a video of doing this in the first person. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm trying to do right now, basically. But it's it's a little bit calmer first. Yeah, I guess I'll probably just make a sort video out of all my last visits to all these things. But, okay, so I wanted to do... Hello. What are the... How's this work again? I don't know the controls for this. Oh, that's what it is. Whoa! A little slower, please. How do I get that slower? There we go. So now... I'm going. 
something kind of like this. There we go. Now, so you kind of experience this is now you get some weird little graphical wishes like you can't see Granny's face in this menu. Hopefully that we're not gonna see too much Granny's face here. Like that. We might. Yeah, because the faster I go, that's that's one problem. The faster I go, the further back the camera moves, so it moves back outside of Granny's head. But now this is a different experience. <laughs> It's at least a bit more over the shoulder, I guess. But we can do better, I'm sure. Oops, sorry about that. That probably sound terrible. Okay, so we're like that. I've, I don't know if I'm just, like, looking for reasons to keep playing this game at this point or what. But I think it's something interesting. It's a cool, unique experience. So right now the camera's actually probably further ahead of where I am, so this would not be very convenient for trying to not bump into things. As I go faster... This is gonna be cool. <laughs> Here we go. Not that you can actually see your character rotate or anything as you do tricks or anything. Oh no, you can't see people next to you. So it's not exactly hover or anything, but even so. I think my nunchuck might have gotten disconnected again. I can't see if I'm crouching or not. This game does give you vis visual feedback by showing you what pose your character's in, so this does mess with me a little bit. Also, the camera goes a little bit through the ground sometimes. But still. Come on, darn it! Nunchuck! But... I know, I, I can't... I, I find when I play this game, it's hard to not be frustrated by something. Especially if I'm going for all the... Thumbs-ups. But at the same time, I think the thumbs-ups really do give life to the game, because they're, they're what give you something to do. So I think they are very important to the game. But they have some issues on their own that I've talked about, mainly just being vague, not knowing what to do, and having a hard time finding if they exist in some cases, let alone actually getting them. Oh no! I didn't expect that person to frame would hit someone. Oh jeez. Hold up. Oh jeez. Yeah, this camera's really far offset. Okay. Let's let's fix that now. Is that, is that the camera fixed? Yeah, okay, there you go. Okay. Let's get back down to the bomb and we'll we'll say goodbye one last time. To this place for real. And I've already talked so much about the magic of it, and it's just the controls. Controls are the main the main frustration of this game, and I don't know if there's much you can do to make it not be frustrating because it's just native to motion controls. So it's kind of a there are things I love about this game, things I don't so much love. But at the same time, those controls in some certain capacity help with the immersion. I admit. So, what do you make of it? I don't know. It, it's a flawed game that I kind of love in a weird way. Which, I mean, I guess that describes most of the games that I love. It's a very deeply flawed one, but one that is something kind of special and unique to me that I haven't had the luxury of finding anywhere else. I don't know how many other people would care for it. It's not like this game got good ratings or anything like that. But right, So, Peta's here. I don't know if... There's always someone who doesn't make it here. Hey, dude. There's... I think there's something I'm missing down here. 
thing I want to do. They're just not rendering, or, I think, because I'm not close enough or something. Whoa. Not trying to hit that. I might be wrong. I'm gonna, I'm, so there's one last thing I wanted to do. I thought that you could just hear at the bottom. I can look at what this thing's called here. He's never bothered with that. What's here? White snow. It's a snow stuff shop, I guess. Oh, now everyone's here. Awesome. So if everyone's here, though, is there a place I can... I thought there was, but maybe I was wrong. Because what I wanted to do was I actually wanted to get a photo, since I never take photos otherwise. But no, it doesn't like to actually are any photos down here, I don't think. Oh well. I think we tried to get this out long enough. So goodbye one last time, resort. Beautiful, fun little place. And to the town as well. And you guys. Hi, Peter. I love it. I love it. I just won't weave to him. Say goodbye. I'll go to the menu. The snowman one last time. No, nope. the elusive snowman. But here we go now. Complete. Ah, I wonder if I've ever gone to the screen actually. You get to see this cool <laughs> evening here. And it says complete. I didn't actually remember they did that. That's cool. Shiny gold medal. Spores flag. Log cabin set. Unnerving doll. Cool. Surreal strap. Lifetime membership card. Emergency kit. Letter of appreciation. Anonymous love letter. And very different letter. Regal crown. All the thumbs up. Of course, all these things done here. All my final stats. One million meters. 104 people hit. Awesome. It's a nice ratio to people rescued. Major turn 5. I haven't played with anyone, so I'm gonna best friend. Collection complete. I like that little stamp there. That's nice. And look at that. You get all the thumbs ups, you get uh, a little magenta tint to it, too. I forgot about that. 61. Beautiful. Good job, Granny. Is that really the case? Hi, we screen snowboard. These these are the buttons in case you weren't aware. I haven't been on this menu <laughs> for a long time. I've always I've always loaded save states to load this up again. Really though, there are not actually any options anywhere. The implication then is that you can't actually. How you can do a slideshow? Realize that. Oh. Okay, you get to see, it. see different art here. Just showing a different art at this point. In the backgrounds. But yeah, I guess you don't get to see any credits anywhere, in which case, that's unfortunate. And I thank everyone who worked on this in this in that case, because I think it was pretty darn cool. I, d I d never touched the balance board thing. I, don't, I own a balance board. I, play, I tried it, I think, on this game at some point. I, I just didn't really think much of it. Y you can, but there's not much point. It's just steering, I think, is done with a balance board instead. Just by laying left and right. It's not a better or worse, really. But otherwise, I don't think this game has a demo play either, so we're just going to kind of sit here until we say goodbye. And at that... On that subject, there's nothing more to do. I want to ta watch the credits, but there are none, so... That's been unfortunate because I want to see the names of and show the names of the people who made this game that I like so much, but it is what it is. Whatever it is. But I have another game I want to play quite a lot that I'm going to play after this. It's not related to this in any way. And at one point will I get to Go Vacation or the original We Ski? And what in what order will I do them? If I do them both, I have no idea. So we'll see how that goes, but I intend to do them at some point, so, and I don't have a very long list of non-licensed games to play anymore, actually, so it might not be that long until I get to them again. Maybe, maybe not. It's just that I kind of want to space them out because they take so long. Like, this was like 60 episodes, which I think is fine, but I know 
for some people, these playthroughs drag on too long, like this episode probably has. It's going to be fun editing this and deciding what goes in and comes out and all that or whatever. Whoops! I'm not even holding my remote. <laughs> I did that by accident, just by scratching my face. Oh well, whatever. In that case, that's been the grand adventure of Whiskey and Snowboard with Granny and her mastery of the slopes and her advanced age and advanced skiing techniques with the snowboard as well. With a few friends we made along the way, Snowman, Anastasia, Peta, and a few others, like Catgirl. And we... we... <laughs> we got to know some places as well. And maybe this is when I'll put up that map as well, however much I finished of it. I, I don't know if I'll have the landmarks on it, which would be kind of important, and I don't expect I'll have the, the secret areas on, unfortunately, but it's it's something, some sign of appreciation for this game that otherwise was fairly silently ignored, and maybe for good reason, but I'm all about the hidden gems and digging through the rough to find the diamonds, because most people don't bother doing that, but sometimes you find something pretty special and shiny that sticks with you for a while, and you like to hang up on your on your mantle to remind yourself of from time to time and reminisce of the fun times you had with it that not many other people got to have unfortunately. Sometimes you show it off to other people too to give them some taste of what it was and some of them recognize it because they've seen it before and they also loved it. Others they discover it for the first time and that's what I live for this channel. Anyways, bye everyone! And of course thank you for joining as well. A few of you I, I joke that there was only one more comment, one commenter this whole time. There were actually a few. I think there might have been like five or six unique commenters. But there were a few people that commented it more than one time too. So I, I acknowledge you even though I don't have all your names listed or memorized to, to say. But it wasn't only one person. You know, there was one person who said more than everyone else. By a decent degree. Regardless, bye everyone for real this time.